Hey guys, welcome back to German Motors and Engineering. In this episode, I would like to present to you our Jeep uh, Grand Cherokee Blackhawk project. Blackhawk because um, most of those vehicles are black and we changed nearly everything on that um, car, which is our concept. So we are not buying wheels from um, any manufacturer and installing them on a car and buying brakes from another one and have conflict between the brake caliper and the wheel. Um, we are not um, buying the um, power our um, package from um, elsewhere and combine it with an exhaust system from another manufacturer. No, we are the manufacturer of all these parts and no matter if you buy only a set of wheels or a lowering kit or an exhaust or anything, you know that the other part which you will buy later or at the same time, they perfectly fit together because we are designing them, we are developing them and we are testing them. So this car has it all. It has the complete package. It has a power um, level for more than 900 horsepower and more than 1100 newton meters of torque. We lowered the car to bring the, that uh, power down on the ground. We developed some new rims. We developed brake systems to um, yeah, get everything safe on the road. We have an exhaust system which uh, uh, is, has the right size and the right volume for that um, kind of power. And we made the car wider. We increased the track by seven centimeters and therefore we designed some fender flares, but let's start at the beginning. So. The thing is that this Trekhor comes from the factory with uh, a 6.2 liter V8 engine and it's already supercharged from the factory and outputs 710 horsepower, which is um, great, but it can be better. And every time when something can be better, let's do it better. So we increase the boost by how much? By 50%. The stock engine runs with 0.8 bar boost and we have zero, uh, we have 1.2 bar of boost right now. We installed bigger, uh, bigger injectors, we uh, installed another belt which is more stable and uh, brings the power from the crankshaft to that supercharger. We programmed not only the engine, we also programmed the transmission because both are talking to each other and the engine and the transmission, they are exchanging a lot of values and when you increase the boost, you are increasing the torque level of that engine and you have to make the transmission computer understand what the engine uh, is doing right now. And this was uh, weeks or months uh, of work to get that on a level where it drives like stock. And also everything around the oil cooler uh, became bigger to uh, get all the heat away and keep the oil on a temperature level where it will uh, yeah, also last for um, high autobahn speeds and will not heat up because when you have hot uh, oil you are likely to um, seize all the bearings in such an engine. So I think the um, all that stuff which we did to the engine um, may be theme of a whole um, video itself so I don't want to go too deep into the details. After the engine comes an exhaust system from us. We started with some bigger catalytic converters to um, blow all the exhaust gases through and not damage the engine with those standard catalytic converters which are very, very small and which uh, have a very small volume that you can uh, get through these con converters. So we have 130 millimeter catalytic converters with a metal um, insert and they have much more room for the exhaust gases to pass by so we have no back pressure or nearly no back pressure and the same is doing uh, the exhaust system it's a two um, it has two pipes with three inch diameter 60 76 millimeter is it and when it's open you have only two mufflers 
under the car, which um, are responsible for that nice sound which it's doing, and the rest is open. When you close the exhaust valves, then the exhaust gases have to pass four more mufflers. So you have six mufflers when it's closed and it makes the car very very uh, quiet even quieter than a stock trackhawk with a stock exhaust system and when it's open you have only two mufflers and this makes a very big difference between the quiet and the loud uh, adjustment of this exhaust system More than 900 horsepower, more than 1100 newton meters of torque need to be brought down to, to the road. So the next thing was lowering the car and we lowered it a little bit more in the back than we did on the front and we re remained the uh, electronic dampers from Bilstein because they are doing a very good job. Therefore when something is good uh, I think you don't need to change it, so we just changed um, the springs and we brought it down by, let's say, uh, something like two centimeters in the front and four centimeters in the back. So the car is now standing on the same level in the front and in the rear. And those rims which we developed, they are not bought from uh, somewhere. We uh, CNC machined those forged wheels from, from forged uh, blanks and they are two piece. We have a barrel which is 11 inch wide and the stock wheel is 9 inch. I think it's 9 by 20 and this is 11 by 22. We are driving, uh, we are, we are driving with uh, Michelin tires because Michelin offers a tire which has a very high grip and this grip is not ending uh, uh, very hard, so you are driving a corner and you can feel when the grip is ending. So it's, it's not uh, that you uh, um, yeah, will be <coughs> throwing away the car. You have time to uh, counter steer and Michelin tires, in my eyes, is uh, the best choice for such high powered cars. Those wheels with this white track um, need to be covered and therefore we 3D scanned the whole car and developed some fender flares which transport the same uh, design like it was before but they are uh, 3.5 centimeters wider and they are covering the wheel where it needs to be covered in uh, legal, legally and they are exposing the wheel where you can uh, expose it. So we uh, designed it in CAD and our plan was to 3D print it, which we did with the first set of these uh, fender flares, but under hot summer conditions they, uh, had, uh, they changed their shape and they warped, so a 3D printed part uh, at this time right now, I think when you have uh, limited machinery and everything is not the end solution. Therefore we printed a new set which we used as a prototype and built some molds for it. And with these molds right now we can offer you this white body fender flare kit in carbon or in uh, fiberglass, however you want it. So you can paint it in the color of your, of your car or you can leave it um, yeah, with this carbon uh, fiber surface. It's up to you. The brakes are also one of the big components <coughs> that we need to explain. They are 444 millimeter in diameter and they have 12 pistons. 12 pistons, not on the whole front axle, they have 12 pistons only at this one caliper. So you have six brake pads and 12 pistons means you have a pair of pistons driving one brake pad. And in between those brake pads you have a little gap. And in this gap uh, all, the exo all the gases which um, which uh, yeah, may come up when you are braking very hard and when you are heating up the brake pad and you are heating up this uh, brake disc. Um, gases and dust uh, can go away in these gaps between those um, little uh, brake pads. So when you have three bra brake pads on each side, six uh, at all, on such a brake, pa uh, such a brake disc, that's um, much, much better than having two long brake pads driven by six pistons. So we are driving 
uh, six brake pads with two, pair, uh, with two pistons per pad, 12 at all. The brake disc itself, it's um, floating, so when it heats up, it can expand or it can uh, shrink again, and you have not uh, any problems with a warped disc when it's uh, heating up, and the same in the rear. In the rear, we have uh, a forged caliper with six pistons, and um, the uh, parking brake drum is included in this uh, brake disc. It's not a two-piece disc like on the front. We have a three-piece disc with a center section made from aluminium with a steel uh, rotor and with steel drum brakes inside. So you just install that brake system and the handbrake function yeah, works like it did before. Okay, guys, I think uh, this should be an overview about everything that we did to that car to make it our own G uh, version of the Jeep Grand Cherokee and let's take it out to the road right now. The cool thing um, from this uh, in this Jeep is that you don't only know that you have a big engine with a supercharger in it, it tells it to you every time when you um, are accelerating. Listen. You hear the, the exhaust system from the back, this nice um, muscle car sound which uh, yeah, pleasures your ears. And every time when you accelerate, this nice quicking uh, sound from the supercharger. It's a screw type supercharger which they used and they could have installed a roots type for example which is making nearly no noise but they know that most of the um, Hemi guys out there in the world appreciate this uh, sound from such a screw type supercharger so I like it too <laughs> I have to say. Yeah, and it's it feels so 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 powerful that car with with that uh, new power level that we installed to that engine. Even the transmission, it's a German transmission, by the way. It's been built in the States, but um, they invented it here in Germany, and it's um, also installed in a lot of other high-class cars. But this. Uh, HAP um, 8 HP 95 uh, transmission has eight gears and when you know other cars with smaller engines then you know from automatic transmissions that as soon as you accelerate and when you step on the step on the pedal that those transmissions shift down one or two gears but this one here it's not it's you are accelerating let me Now we are driving in a, in a fixed gear, it's gear number six or seven right now. And when I'm accelerating, it holds that gear because the engine tries to accelerate the car. And so when you are stepping on the pedal, you are not commanding a certain throttle opening. You are commanding a certain acceleration from the car that you want. And the transmission tells the engine, hey, my driver wants to accelerate, please open the throttle. And it opens the throttle and then the transmission realizes that it only has to open the throttle for 20, 30, 40 percent or something to generate the acceleration that you want. And this is why it stays in that gear. It doesn't have to shift down because that engine has more than 1100 newton meters of torque and this makes that that transmission holding the gear and therefore it, it accelerates much smoother than yeah a transmission which has to shift and shift and shift because the engine has little power and a very small power band here you can drive from a thousand horse uh, from a thousand rpm up to six and a half thousand rpm and you can use that whole range because in that whole range it nearly has a stable high 1000 newton meter plus torque level it's 
crazy. It's um, hard to explain. I think that's something you have to you have to uh, experience. And yeah, such a track hawk in stock condition is a great car. It's it's from the factory, one of the best and one of the most dense cars that you can buy, because you have. You have a car which fits in, in every city and in every parking uh, parking space, but it has one of the biggest engines on that planet. It has four-wheel drive. It has one of the best transmissions in it. There's so much, so much things in combined in such a small room that for me, that's the most, the highest dense car in the world. And you can accelerate with your family when it's dry, when it's wet, and you never have the fear that the back of the car um, comes out and you have to counter steer or throw it away. You are accelerating and when you are accelerating it goes in this direction and not there or there. Even when it's, even when you have some, some um, when, when, when the tires are, are spinning, it still goes in that direction because you are driving all four tires. And when you are accelerating, it feels like it feels like crazy. So even even when a plane is starting, it's not accelerating that hard like this. So yeah, we made that great product even better, and that's what we usually try to do. We uh, not try to turn it into anything different. We uh, choose cars. And we make these cars in, in all their characteristics better. We remain them as they are, but in a better way of themselves. And this is what we have done right here. It's wider, so it has a wider track. It has lighter wheels and it has wider tires, which have more grip. We improve the suspension, we improve the brakes. And of course, all this addresses the horsepower level that we, which we are running right now. Also, the exhaust system, you can drive it quiet. You can drive it, let me shift to quiet. Now it's in the quiet position. And when I'm accelerating right now, you only hear the supercharger and not the exhaust anymore. Let's compare it to loud. There it is. Cool, right? So yeah, I hope you enjoyed that video. Maybe in one of the next videos we will take that one out to the drag strip and uh, see what it's doing on the quarter mile or from 100 to 200 kilometers per hour click the bell um, if you want and if you liked that video give us some nice comments and if you have a track walk or any other project that you want us to realize for you call us this is what this is what we are doing thank you see you next time <laughs>